Um, yeah, so this is Betty, a co-founder of Akala. Um, and Brian, uh, CTO and also co-founder of Akala, uh, is also here today. Um, and, you know, of course, Dan, uh, our v uh, newly minted uh, VP of growth, is also here to uh, help us out. Um, and I'll be very brief uh, and leave most of time to Brian uh, to show uh, some of the tech stuff to you guys. Um, and I'll start with by briefly introduce uh, Polkadot and uh, Akala. Uh, but Brian will actually go into details of how to deploy uh, Solidity smart contracts to Akala EVM and Polkadot. Um, and then I will, you know, mention uh, quickly about the bounty um, and mo mostly, you know, tips for you to build a winning app uh, at East Denver. So let's get started. Uh, what is Polkadot? Uh, if you know all of this, please just bear with me. Uh, Polkadot is the uh, multi-chain network founded by Dr. Gavin Wood, uh, who's the creator of EVM and Solidity programming language. Um, and Polkadot is also uh, highly uh, scalable. Uh, it gives chains like Akala um, highest uh, shared network security from day one. Um, so we are currently leveraging uh, Polkadot's market cap, which is at about uh, well, uh, I think yesterday I counted as like 14 billion, it's probably way up today, uh, as the proof of state consensus, right? Um, and at the same time, uh, it's fully uh, decentralized and also growing um, with a thriving uh, developer uh, uh, ecosystem. And lots of uh, us, like builders, uh, are building uh, many different types of softwares uh, together. So that's Polkadot. Um, and what is Akala? Uh, Akala is a cross-chain DeFi hub and de facto stablecoin platform for Polkadot. Uh, it's also a lending pad for Ethereum DeFi dApps to get access to the Polkadot ecosystem. And also the aggregated uh, cross-chain liquidity like Bitcoin. And in terms of core offerings, uh, Akala provides three DeFi products and uh, what we call primitives that you can build on top of. Um, and these are the multi-collateralized stablecoin uh, using Bitcoin, uh, DOT, and uh, other various different type of assets, including crushing assets, of course. Um, and uh, the second product is the staking derivative. Uh, it's called Liquid DOT or L DOT for short, uh, allowing you to stake while participating in other yield earning DeFi activities or at the same time. Um, and lastly, there's also a DEX that provides cross-chain unified uh, liquidity uh, for all the uh, app applications uh, on Akala network. Uh, the, all, all of these products are uh, available on our live test net. Uh, you're welcome to try them out, uh, although they are actually not part of the uh, scope for the, uh, our East Denver bounty. But yeah, feel free to try them out. And uh, beyond those uh, DeFi products, uh, Akala is also the gateway for Ethereum uh, uh, applications to get access to the Polkadot ecosystem, uh, making crushing liquidity and DeFi protocols composable. And Akala EVM, um, as you can see on the chart here, uh, it's only one module on the Akala network. And the Akala EVM enables Solidity contracts to be deployed on Akala and Polkadot with minimum changes. It also offers many distinct features apart from just being uh, faster and cheaper. So for example, uh, you can pay fees in any tokens uh, like stablecoin. And there's also an on-chain automatic scheduler that enables use cases like uh, subscription, uh, recurring payments, uh, et cetera. Um, and we recently collaborated with uh, Ample Force um, when, you know, for example, when Ample contracts deploy on Akala, not only Ample assets are now available on Polkadot ecosystem, but also Ample is a first class fee token that you can pay transaction fees for uh, uh, on Akala. Uh, not going into too much detail, but just slightly uh, that's relevant to you is uh, on the Akala EVM. Uh, the code name is Project uh, Bodhi. I only mentioned this because our SDK is named Bodhi.js, so you know where it comes from. Um, and the Akala EVM enables uh, the one wallet, uh, one account experience. So you can actually use one uh, uh, account and bind it with, well, Polkadot account and bind it with the Ethereum address. So you can send transactions, not only within the EVM, like with the smart contracts, but also natively on Akala, but also uh, crushing on Polkadot and beyond, right? Using this one account. So um, that's re really one of the advantages. Um, and the SDK Bodhi.js gives you the ability to interact with the contracts on a color chain, but it is also a Web3 provider that enables compatibility with various tools and, uh, and dApps. 
So uh, we are super thrilled to be here at East Denver uh, and helping you guys um, and also other Ethereum applications to open shops on Polkadot and beyond. So um, yeah, so I, I will actually go into more details on the bounties later, but I'll actually hand over to Brian now to show you the metrics um, and how to deploy contracts on Akala EVM, which is our first bounty. Uh, so pay attention. Um, th there's also an upcoming workshop also run by Brian to show more on the on-chain scheduler, which is our second bounty. So do stay tuned for that one. Um, and for now, uh, I will just stop sharing um, and then hand over to Brian. Yeah, thanks, Betty, for the intro. So um, let me share my screen first. So um, with our current EVM, you will be able to develop and uh, deploy um, Ethereum projects or Solidity projects into Akala um, using uh, some of the some of the existing uh, Ethereum tools. So uh, we don't currently support all the uh, um, development tools, but we do support uh, Waffle and Remix, so which is um, two of the quite popular development tools for Ethereum developers. So you'll be able to build your project with Waffle, you'll be able to build your project with Remix, and you'll be able to deploy your projects and with help of the Body.js that will have developed um, to deploy your smart contracts into the Akala EVM. We also offer the EVM Playground, so is you can just, um, I'm going to show you in a second, which you can just um, um, upload your smart contracts and deploy them in the UI. So, um, all the repos and all the code I'm actually going to show you today will be available at the EVM examples repo in the Akala uh, GitHub repo. So you can also take a look yourself. So let me start with the um, Akala EVM. So uh, this is the EVM.akala.network. Uh, uh, in this um, what website, you'll be able to uh, like upload your smart contract, deploy your smart contract, and execute the smart contract. So first, well, uh, you need to have a Polkadot.js extension installed and create an account. And you might need, uh, we have uh, this four set button. So this is a, a test account. You can just click button and you should get some test token to allow you to deploy um, on the uh, smart contracts on our testnet. And then the next step will be, you can just upload your smart contracts and you'll be able to deploy them and execute them. So, um, so in order to uh, create the ABI bundles um, to be uploaded here, you can use the Remix, which is one of the um, easiest way. Um, so this is a very, very simple ERC20 smart contracts. Uh, it's basically for your ERC20 uh, with um, some fixed amount of initial supply to the sender. So in the Remix, I can just um, compile the token and then this will generate artifacts file. So this will generate this uh, mytoken.json, which includes the API and the compiled backcode and all the additional uh, information. So you, what you can do is copy paste this file, save to your um, save to somewhere locally, and then you can just uh, upload it here. So I already have this available um, in my desktop. So this mytoken.json file. So I can you can um upload here, so you can see all the uh, methods uh, of the ERC20 and upload. Um, so this will get you the my tokens and um, smart contract ready to be deployed. So next thing I can just deploy the smart contract and use my test account. Um, so uh, I can choose to send some uh, native token, which will be the SAA token in this case, or set the guest limit, I can just deploy. And um, so sign the transition using the Polkadot.js extension. So you notice I'm, I'm using Polkadot.js extension instead of the MetaMask because it offers unified um, experience. So you only need to use Polkadot.js extensions to all the signing. Uh, you don't need to switch in between the Polkadot.js extension and the MetaMask. So you can see this is the smart contract just being deployed. And I can execute uh, the smart contract. Just um, uh, you will notice 
for my test account, it also comes with the event address. So all the uh, subscription accounts that have to interact with the smart contract will also automatically get the event address. Or you can just using the bind auto generate event address here to buy the uh, to generate and buy the event address. So you can see this one already have this address binded. And then I can just well call some method I can check the balance. So I check the balance of myself. So you can see I have the, all the money. And I can do some transfer. Or I can like, query some other things like the name, the total supply. Uh, let me do a transfer. So let me transfer to this account. So copy paste the event address here. Set some amount. Uh, change back. And I can just run. Uh, say I'm using the wrong account. Yeah, so that's failed because I picked the wrong account. This doesn't have any money, so it should be test two. Yeah, so you can see now this transfer success. And uh, so let me check the balance again. Yep, yeah, so you can see the, um, the recipients got this amount of money. So yeah, this is basically how you can use um, the EVM program to upload and deploy execute contracts. So while we are here, I'm going to uh, quickly show you some of the system contracts that we already have here. So th those are the uh, system contracts and come with the uh, Akala EVM. So we have the ERC20 for each of, of our um, native tokens. So in, in this case, we have the ACA, AUSD, DOS, and XBDC and other tokens. We also have the Oracle smart contracts and the uh, scheduler smart contracts as well. So, um, for example, for the, so those are, they are, we call the merit contracts. So it's like, for example, in this ACA contract is somewhat similar to WEs. That is the wrapper of the East country on Ethereum, but it's better because um, for WEs to work, you need to mink WEs and to get the East back, you need to redeem them. But because the uh, we owns the full um, end to end of the blockchain, so we don't need to do that. So the, um, the balance of the uh, merit token is the storage is exactly the same as um, the native storage. So there's no need to um, do the mint or redeem actions. So I can just check my balance. So this is my SA amount. I can um, do a transfer to someone else. Let's run the transition. So uh, let me query the balance again. So you can see, well, let's transfer some money. Uh, there's also some amount of gas fee is also being deducted. So you will notice uh, it's not exactly reduced by the amount of supply because there's additional gas fee. So on the blockchain explorer, let me do a refresh here. Uh, let me see if I can find the transition. Yep, so that's the event call. Uh, you can see that is a uh, currency transfer happening uh, because the balance is so, uh, because well, basically you have 18 decimals, the only and the tiny amount. So this doesn't show. Now you can see this is a, actually a native transfer, uh, not just a, a event transfer. And so the balance um, that I can see here matches to the balance uh, displayed uh, in here. So uh, while we are at here, so I can, we'll, I can uh, quickly show you, um, oops, let me just copy this one, uh, the Oracle smart contract. So you can well, basically use the smart contract to query the price of the token. So you can query the, the dot price is uh, $19 already. Um, so this is a timestamp. So when the last time the price is feed into the smart contract. So uh, you will have access to um, the Oracle that uh, powers the Akala, uh, the Oracle gateways. 
So in order to deploy your debug control, you don't actually need to write your own Oracle solutions. So um, yeah, so the, this is basically the Akali VM. So I'm going to show you, next thing is show you some code, how to uh, compile those things and how to uh, deploy them to your local testnet or to our um, testnet uh, from the code. So this is Akala EVM project. Oh, sorry, Akala exam, uh, EVM example project. So it makes things slightly larger. So we come a few examples. So uh, let's go to the ERC21. So that's what well, you can just run Yarn to install dependencies, Yarn compile. Oops, sorry. Yarn build to build um, the smart country using Waffle. So this, this smart country, well, it, it's just again a very simple uh, ERC20. And so I just using the standard waffle to build a project. You can check the package JSON for all the dependency we're using. So it's just pretty standard um, Ethereum project setup, just with addition of the um, body JS for us. And so this will generate the basic token.json file. And then you can um, in upload here, upload the basic tokens here. Uh, which will get you the S1. So you can just, again, just deploy it and use an execute method. Um, and then while well, you probably want to write some tests, so uh, we come some examples for the unit test. So this um, is come with a setup to run in the local test step. And you can run batch tests to verify if the smart contract actually works. So in order to run your local test net, uh, you can build Akala yourself from the uh, repo, or the easiest way is just uh, using the Docker image we have deployed. So you can, um, hopefully you can see this thing. So that basically you just Docker run and the uh, Akala node um, with the div. So to start with the div testnet, uh, instant sealing means uh, it will produce a new block as soon as the transition enters in your transition pool, so there's no need to wait for a few seconds for the new block. WX node just expose the um, WebSocket post. So this um, runs a new local testnet. And back here, I can just run test to start run the unit test. So this will deploy um, the smart contracts into the local testnet and run a bunch of the, run all the unit tests to verify if it actually works. So you can see uh, the tests are passing. And yeah, you finish drawing the test. So on the test net, you can see there are a bunch of logs. Um, well, it's basically showing um, the transition is being um, executed. So on the um, console, you can also connect into the local node to see um, the EVM transitions happening in the blockchain. So you can see this event call um, and all other event calls. So this is basically how you can run a local testnet and deploy a smart contract on your local testnet. So next thing I'm going to show you um, is how to deploy a Uniswap to the Akala blockchain. Uh, I would like to use the Uniswap repo directly, but unfortunately, the Uniswap uh, repo is using the very old version of Ethos. So uh, there needs a, a lot of work to migrate it to the uh, newer version to be compatible with 4 DJs. So I'm just um, taking the artifacts uh, from the Uniswap repo. So those are the JSON uh, file. Um, so actually, let me just run it. So this will deploy um, the unit sort contract to our testnet. So so this is the all the setup required. Um, so in the deploy um, smart con uh, deploy JS, you can see the code. It's just a pretty standard ESAS JS. There's nothing special uh, to Akala. It's just a normal Ethereum project. So you can see um, in here I'm creating a uh, the ERC token contracts for the Akala and the DOT token. 
This is the country address. So this is a system contract, so we can pick the country address. So you can see this is a bunch of zeros to uh, keep things simple. And we deploy the Uniswap factory contracts. And we deploy the Uniswap router contracts. Um, just put in the contract address. Approve, um, so we can uh, so, uh, do some transfer, add some liquidity, uh, just print a bunch more information out. So this is basically the script to deploy Uniswap on our testnet. So you can see um, it deploys um, the router to this address. So I'm going to change the address here. And run this script. So this script will basically uh, take the Uniswap router, uh, again, do some proof, uh, check some balance, and do a Uniswap trade. So this, in this case, you try to sell some of DOT to buy some SAA token. Um, so it will try to um, sell exact one dot to buy how, how much uh, to buy uh, some amount of SA, and this will print the balance uh, to verify if the trade is success. So it's running on testnet, so you can see um, the before um, balance, the trade after balance. So the dot amount reduced by one, the SA amount increased by um, roughly one. You can check the liquidity pool um, in the trading pair. You can see um, this one um, they charge some uh, amount of uh, uh, liquidity fee as well. So this is basically um, like how you can like, write a script to trade uh, Uniswap um, with your script. So obviously you can easily connect this to your existing UI to get things working. Um, in the setup JS, we don't do too much thing special, special things. So what we do is basically um, create a provider. So this case, in this case, this is uh, Ether's uh, provider. So it's offered, uh, the, implemented by the body, uh, implementing the provider interface, abstract provider interface of Ether's. So it's an abstract provider. So it works with Ether's um, JS. And this takes a web socket provider, which is basically in a node URL. Uh, wait for it to be ready. Uh, create the uh, create a signing key pair. So it will be using the one coming from the environment variable, which I'll be defined myself. Or it just takes the test uh, key pair if you're uh, running this on your local test net. And create a signing key. Uh, create a signer. Uh, this is the again. Uh, abstract signers from the ethers JS, and uh, that's pretty much it. So now you with this wallet, and you can just uh, use it as a normal um, ethers uh, wallet, and should, this should just work with your existing uh, deployment scrap or any other uh, scrap that using ethers JS. So this is basically um, how you can uh, deploy the Uniswap swap contracts into our testnet and or, or if you want you can also deploy this to your local network so uh, you just if you don't set up any environment variable by default you could use the local testnet and you can just run one with the docker command um, yes yeah, so you, and you can have the deep uh, units of running so another thing i want to show you is the ship scheduler so this is also um, a unique feature implemented by Akala. So this allow you to uh, schedule a call to be invoked later in the blockchain. So there's no need to have like off-chain timers invoking smart contracts on certain time. You can just schedule a call and you will, will be called uh, in the later. Uh, so this is the uh, interface of the system contract. So it takes the address, uh, how much uh, native token you would like to send. Uh, in our test day will be the SAU token. The guest limit for, for the call, so you, uh, the transition fee for this amount of guest limit will be reserved uh, upfront and, and after the call is executed, if there are any leftovers, you will get refund later. And there's a storage limit, uh, so this is a state rent features, uh, also unique to Akala EVM. Uh, it's not enabled, so you just pass a big value for now for the testnet. 
And so let's see some minimum delay. So um, minimum amount of blocks before the scheduled call will be called. So if uh, you will notice uh, this number is a uh, number of blocks after the current block. So if you pass zero, this means the scheduled call will be scheduled in the next block. If you pass uh, one, this means that it will be um, called in the two blocks after the current block. And the input data, so is uh, well, the, just including the selectors and the parameters to the call. So to use the scheduler is super simple. Uh, this is a uh, recurring payment smart contracts. The idea is basically you, if you want to, for example, budgeting, do some budgeting, you have uh, say $10,000 for to spend in the next six months. You probably don't want to have all of them available because you might just spend all of them in the next two days. So you can deploy the recurring payment smart contracts, lock you all your money and for every uh, week and send yourself some amount of money back. So um, yeah, that's a payable, so you can just receive the native token, uh, ensure uh, it's receiving enough token, save some parameters, the, per, uh, the period, how, how, how many times this payment should happen, and the destination, the receiver uh, address. Then you can just use the scheduler, um, smart contracts to schedule a call. So in this case, you call itself, this country itself, uh, the value is zero in this case. Uh, the CPS limit, storage limit, just passing some big enough number to get things working. And the period, uh, then the input data. So we want to call the pay function. So we just encode with signature the pay function without any arguments. And in the pay function, we don't want anyone just call us. So we'll make sure the sender is the, the smart country itself. So other people kind of call us to trigger early pay. And if the remaining count is equal to one, so this is the last call of the pay. Um, in that case, uh, it will just self-destruct, send everything to the uh, recipient address. And at the same time, destroy this contract. Just be a nice citizen uh, to free up unused, uh, to free up unused contracts uh, to save some storage usage. Um, otherwise, we'll just send this amount of money to the two and reduce remaining count and schedule another call to be called later. Yep, so this is uh, basically the scheduler call smart contract. Uh, very simple, uh, very easy to use the scheduler feature. And in the unit test, well, we have some unit tests, uh, similar setup. So let's also deploy uh, this to your local test net and run the unit test to verify if everything works. Uh, because uh, this assumes uh, the uh, the unit test is run with instance in, so that it will generate a new block um, when a new transition is uh, entered in a transition pool. So uh, in this case, we're using a system remark smart um, transition to trigger a new block. Um, yeah, so this is. Uh, the all the most of example. So we also have Oracle, uh, which is also a uh, very similar scheduler. You you just offer the simple simple interface, uh, get price, and you can use this to get the um, to access the price data from the Oracle. So you can in in our wiki, we should have documents of all the system smart contracts. So of, of all the address, and uh, they are also available. Um, in the color event here as well. So you can just try those smart contracts uh, in the color event. Yeah, so that is, um, yeah, most all the things I want to show you. So basically you can use a color event, um, so a color, uh, the event playground to uh, deploy and run your smart contracts to try things. You can use Remax to build, uh, to just do your um, smart contract development. You can even just deploy them to the JS uh, step inside Remix for debugging other things. If you are not using the native feature, unique feature of archive event, and just compile them and, and save the JSON file upload to the archive event to be executed. Or you can just using uh, the waffle to build um, your smart contracts and write a simple script using the uh, 
using the body JS to deploy uh, your smart contracts to uh, our public testnet or your local own local testnet. And, and this will work with your existing ESS JS project. So um, that's all I have for you um, for the session. So I'm going to hand over the step to Betty. Cool. Uh, yeah, let me just uh, share my screen and uh, finish it off uh, with the bounties and maybe go into questions uh, after. Okay, um, everyone can see uh, my screen? Okay, cool. Um, hold on, e everyone can hear as well? Okay. Okay, all right, so, uh, okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, let me just go into a little bit more detail on the bounty. So uh, we, we have uh, two bounties worth of total $3,000. Um, and the first bounty is an easy one, right? If you uh, tune into what Brian just said, um, you just deploy a DAB, a contract on uh, Polkadot using a Kala EVM, um, and the bounty was $1,000. Um, and bounty number two, uh, slightly level up. So you need to build a DAB using a Kala EVM with the on-chain automated scheduler function. Um, and Brian also, you know, quite kindly also show you uh, how, to, how to do one of the examples, like uh, recurring payments. Uh, this is two thousand dollar bounty, um, and of course, you know, like what, once you've got this on chain scheduler, uh, there's so many things you can build it out uh, with, right? Uh, for example, you can now build a uh, charity DAO to accept automatic recurring donations. Uh, you can also uh, build a Web three version of Stripe for subscription and payment services, um, or just simply incorporate subscription in your current DAO. Um, and of course, you can also level up your DeFi DAO. Uh, for example, you can automatically um, take profits, uh, reinvest, uh, uh, doing payouts, um, uh, or liquidate your risky positions, right, uh, without the need of external actors like Keeper. So uh, that's something cool to, uh, I guess, innovate upon. Um, and also uh, worth pointing out uh, is we would happily accept contracts that you've built for other bounties and prices. We're happy uh, for you to reuse some of the code that you've done for other bounties and prices. Uh, we'll actually like reward that because the whole point uh, is for us to be here to help you uh, to succeed and build winning that at East Denver, you know, um, together. And in terms of judging criteria, um, okay, so that was just examples that you can look over. We'll actually share the slides later. Um, and in terms of judging criteria, uh, it must be a working DAP, obviously, um, and there's no requirement for front end, but of course, uh, you can surprise us uh, by building one, of course. Um, and we'll also judge on wow factor and originality and, and other stuff. Um, and all of these details are available on the hacker guide on our wiki, uh, which we'll be sharing later. Um, and also, it doesn't stop here. So we have an intention to share these to a much wider community and support this to launch on uh, Akala and also Polkadot. So we are super excited to see uh, what you're coming up with. Um, and yeah, I saw someone asking this question. So if you are here on the Crowdcast um, and also submitted a bounty, uh, you are eligible for Akala swags, t-shirts and etc. So we'll email you about this um, uh, later. So that's pretty much uh, what I'm uh, gonna present uh, today. So yeah, so be sure to check out the hacker guy. Um, I'm sure East Denver also provide you a whole bunch of information. So be, be sure to check out those um, and join the East Denver Discord and also this Akala channel there. Uh, that's our main uh, channel, uh, communication channel to support you uh, both technically and also you know, product wise or any questions regarding bounties, et cetera. And uh, start happy hacking. So I'll just stop sharing. Um, yeah, so let's see if you've got any questions. Oh, okay. So interestingly, most, most questions are regarding our launch. Um, cool. So I think this is very timely. Um, the Kusama uh, launch will happen uh, very soon. 
Um, and uh, uh, right now, uh, we are testing on Rococo. Uh, I think we can also share the link of uh, Rococo as well. There are a bunch of parachains uh, uh, connected to Rococo, testing uh, cross-chain communication um, and other stuff. And once those are ready and stable, it's a clear indicator uh, when uh, those changes will be deployed onto Kusama. Um, and then, you know, uh, everything else will just uh, follow on uh, from, from there on. Um, and then, of course, you know, Polkadot will usually just wait for Kusama to be stable um, and then uh, will be launched then. So, yeah. And then for those like who, who don't know what I'm talking about, um, basically um, uh, in the Polkadot ecosystem, uh, it also has a canary network called Kusama. It's basically a valued test net to uh, test economic dynamics, um, also governance dynamics uh, on uh, a separate chain, right? Because you can't test any of those things I just mentioned, uh, consensus um, and also governance without any value of the chain. Uh, but you don't want to make you know, huge mistakes on the mainnet Polkadot. So uh, that's why Polkadot has this canary network called Kusama that we run all the tests on it. So as for Akala, uh, we are a DeFi chain. So it's gonna be lots of value locked on the, uh, on the protocols. So we do exactly the same thing. So we're gonna launch on Kusama uh, and the network launch there called Karora. Uh, you can read more about that later. Um, but yeah, so so we also do a lot of testing there before we actually go live on the Polkadot um, and serving, I guess, both uh, both networks. So that answers that question. And then, uh, oh, okay. So the second question is uh, uh, apart from the auction, so I answer that one. And uh, what is the difference of EVM compatibility between Akala and Moonbeam? Um, oh, that is a great question. Um, so. Uh, where do I start? So I think the uh, intention is very different. So uh, Akala uh, a chain is geared to be DeFi composable um, and also DeFi focused. So our requirement is um, any of the smart contracts uh, needs to be composable with all our existing uh, modules that we've built uh, for DeFi. Um, and then uh, that also requires uh, two sides compatibility. So users need to have a seamless experience, you know, inside EVM, outside EVM, and also cross chain. And then as developer, uh, we also want that uh, uh, seamlessness. Um, well, so, so this is just an example, right? So for example, we have uh, this cool feature of you can pay fees in any token. Um, that's only possible uh, because we've changed the uh, economic logic or the chain logic at a lower level uh, outside of EVM, right? Because imagine, you know, uh, it doesn't matter how good you are at building smart contracts, uh, you would never be able to do that on Ethereum just by building smart contracts, right? You will have to change the uh, EVM um, and also a lower level things to actually make that happen, right? And, and that's basically not quite possible. Um, so, and then on Akala or on a substrate, well, or Polkadot, you're able to do that. So that's one of our innovations is uh, any accepted tokens, say Bitcoin uh, or Empolator, um, any stable coin uh, can be used to pay fees. Um, and then uh, in order to, you know, our requirement is like, it's cool to make that possible on the chain, but also we require that to be available for any uh, smart contract developers, right, to use with an EVM. So, um, so now, uh, when you write a smart contract, uh, you can pay fees in the stablecoin um, that you wouldn't otherwise uh, possible using the normal approach. Um, and uh, and another thing, of course, you know, like um, any of the special features we built on the Akala chain, um, Brian actually briefly showed Oracle, right? So our Oracle has. Uh, uh, quality of service built in, right? If ever any of you are familiar, you know, with Ethereum, I'm sure you are, and you still remember uh, Black Thursday, right? So uh, when things, when the, when the prices drop sharply, I mean, also the network got very congested, you know, your Oracle wouldn't work as normally expected because the gas fee is so high and something just falls apart, right? So we, we're taking that as an ex inspiration to uh, improve. Uh, our Oracle um, uh, is uh, transactions or price feeds are actually system transactions. So that doesn't matter what happens on the chain, um, those transactions are guaranteed to be included in the block. So, so all the dApps who's consuming those price feeds are always guaranteed to get the latest price feed. 
right? So we can only do that to innovate at a chain level, right? Because that's a system transaction and always being prioritized. Um, but we are also making that possible uh, within our EVM so, so anyone can consume that. So those are the areas that we are focusing because we are building on different levels, but also making everything uh, uh, available and composable for folks building smart contracts and also folks building you know, other types of applications. So that's Akala's sort of focus. Uh, whereas for uh, Moonbeam, you know, they um, well, um, uh, uh, they are you know uh, purely you know EVM compatible chain. So for them, they are more focused on uh, tooling and, uh, and and pure compatibility with Ethereum developers, right? So um, you you basically use a MetaMask, so that the whole end to end experience will be quite similar to Ethereum. And obviously, that's going to help a whole bunch of different developers to uh, I guess explore Moonbeam as well as Substrate and also the Polkadot ecosystem. So I think the two are probably complement uh, to each other and also solving different problems uh, in the space. So yeah, so hopefully that actually answers that question. Uh, quite long winded, but yeah. Um, uh, where main that? Um, I've kind of answered that. <laughs> um, and also, will the launch of Ethereum 2.0 uh, affect your project? If so, how? Um, Oh, uh, if anything, um, I think Ethereum 2.0 will be a, a positive effect because, um, you know, as a as a builder team, so we are in the space for a long time. Um, when we started building on uh, Substrate and, and Polkadot, it was about two plus years ago. We were looking at uh, ETH 2.0 uh, as something that we want to use, right? Because all the promises that it has, uh, the, the, the sharded uh, architecture uh, in particular, uh, it's going to help a lot of scalability problems. So it will be a great, uh, I guess, upgrade uh, to the uh, current DeFi or, or you know, just uh, in general, um, uh, the space will be a great addition, um, I would say. Um, and at the same time, I think um, everyone here would probably all agree that the future will be multi-chain, right? Um, it's not going to be one chain dominate um, and one chain rules us all because, you know, like uh, I think it's a bit... I guess naive <laughs> um, to 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 actually say um, uh, one chain is going to satisfy us all forever, right? So I think the ease upgrade will be a great progression uh, down that track. And also uh, in Polkadot and many other, I guess, uh, newer chains come out. Uh, we all have to share the same vision of uh, we can connect together, right? And also uh, currently all um, fragmented liquidity can be all uh, aggregated. Aggregated. I think that's only going to uh, elevate the field that we are in. I think most of the people in uh, the current uh, blockchain space, they're probably 0.0001% of the entire population. There's so many more people out there uh, that are waiting for this tech that we're building here uh, to be available to them in a more accessible and usable way. So, yeah, so I think any upgrade will be actually helpful in the field. Um, yeah, and then uh, and then even just for today, uh, we are connecting uh, with Ethereum with uh, using bridges. And then for 2.0, and that's certainly uh, once that's you know live and fully functional, um, that's certainly an avenue that uh, you know folks like us as well as Polkadot in general would uh, would would be uh, wanting to actually connect all those uh, uh, assets and also liquidity and also probably DApps as well. So yeah. So hopefully that answers the question as well. Oh, cool. So we're all done. Um, yeah. So then I guess uh, that's all if there's no more questions. Um, and uh, yeah, I think folks also posting some useful links in the chat and you can find us on show show. Uh, I think Discord is a good avenue for asking any type of questions. And happy hacking. Okay.